Hey everybody, welcome to another week in Pensado's Place. He's Dave Pensado, I'm Herb Trowick. Our guest who you're gonna meet in a minute is super hot, super hot composer, songwriter, Jason Evigan. But first, if you are anywhere near Phoenix, Arizona, November 30th, we want to invite you to Pensado Live in the Desert. Exactly, exactly what you're thinking about. Dave and I, and we're bringing the whole team. We're coming to the esteemed Conservatory for the Recording Arts and Sciences. We're going to do the show. We're going to bring a bunch of goodies that you can get, answer your questions, hang out, fellowship with you afterwards, you know, the kind of Pensado thing. It's going to go from 1.30 to 3.30, right in the middle of the day. That's on Friday, and you can be at the place, but this place is in the desert. Here's where you can sign up. Before we introduce the ITL, we want to thank you always to like and subscribe and click notify. Then you'll receive the newsletter, and we'll be in touch. We've got a lot of stuff coming your way. So now for the esteemed ITL, Dave, what you got? Ooh, I got a good one. Five new must-have EQs that I've just recently started using. And what makes it a good one? That I like them. Okay, cool. That's what I thought. <laughs> they Super work. They all work, I swear. <laughs> Check it out. Hey, guys. Um, you know, I say that every week. So this time I'm going to say, hey, guys and ladies. Um, I get a lot of plugins. I love plugins. I love coming into work knowing I've got a new plugin. So I have an opportunity to, to sift through them and kind of show you guys or tell you guys or bring to your attention some of the plugins I've been using lately. These are some new ones for me. I'm gonna give you five, maybe six. We'll see if we got time. I'm not gonna give you a tutorial. I'm just gonna show you a little bit about them so you can make a decision whether you wanna check them out and get a demo for yourself. So the first one I'm gonna show you, oh, you know what? This is a song by my friend Isaac. Isaac calls himself uh, Almost Owen, and I think that's the name of his band too. Uh, this song is uh, We Out Here. I love this song. I, I mixed it um, a couple months ago. So, so we're going to start with the, um, with the channel strip by SSL, Native 6, version 6. So be sure you get the version 6. It's brand new. And uh, a lot of people think this is probably the most accurate version of the, of the SSL channel strip. Uh, there's some others you might want to check out. But uh, right now, I'm, I'm in love with this one. Here's the SSL on a, on a kick drum. Okay, so now let's let's try it in a short spot so you can you can uh, AB it. Here we go. This is without it. So you can tell I'm adding a little punch, a little knock, a little attack to the kick. Uh, you can see what I'm doing here. Check this plug-in out. Um, the, the compression on it reminds me, I, now don't flame me, but it reminds me a, a little bit of the uh, DBX160 XT. Uh, I believe that it's the same VCA in both. If you want to take yours apart and verify that, go ahead. Now, let me show you another plugin. So here's the EQ550 by Overloud. Um, it's part of their gym series, and um, I've fallen in love with this plugin. I don't want to make you sad, but f there was a there was a few days where it was free. Um, so you, what I try to do is get notification from several different manufacturers, several different retailers and resellers, so you can keep up when these come out. Uh, I think they gave away a hundred a day, and so. Uh, my staff and I, uh, Nico and I, were, were, were really trying hard to grab one. It's really good. Check this out. This is on the vocal. Now, it's the same artist that we've been working with. Here we go. We out here smoking, everybody loping, kitty pool. 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 We out here smoking, everybody. So you can see it's, it's, it's adding a little color, it's adding a, a lot of energy. Um, check this out. We out here smoking, everybody loping, kitty pool. We out here smoking, everybody loping, kitty pool. We out here smoking. It's really smoking. smooth, the high end is really smooth. We out here smoking, everybody loping, kitty pool. We out here smoking, everybody loping, kitty pool. We out here smoking, everybody loping, kitty pool. We out here 
here smoking. A lot of options, a lot of options. Um, I, I love the fact that you can hit it harder and it, and it reacts a lot like the original 550, which is, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that's one of my favorite all-time EQs. Okay, so let's check out the next one. Uh, this is a fairly new plugin just came out. Um, it's by Acoustica, a company, as you know, I, I really like what they do also. This is, uh, as you can tell by the knobs, I'm going to let you guess what it is, but you should know it. Uh, it's a plug-in manufacturer that begins with A. And uh, it's beautifully modeled. The top end on this is silk. So here's an example of this plug-in in action. I, I've, I've, got it on, I've got it on all of my high-end percussion stuff so I can control it with one auxiliary track. So um, what I did here, this is a little bit odd, uh, I'm, I'm taking some of the ultra high out and boosting something a little bit below it to get it to cut through a little better. But check this plug-in out, I think you really like it. Okay, onward and upward to the next one. A couple of my favorite people in the business, uh, Peter Montesi over at uh, A Designs and uh, Scott over at Kush, they got together and this is a model of a hardware uh, EQ that uh, a lot of people think it's one of the finest EQs, uh, modern EQs around. Doesn't have a lot of knobs, but boy is it good. I've got it on my stereo bus, which as you know, is a sacred place to put something. So you know I have much respect for it if I use it on my stereo bus. Let's check it out. So you see how good the hammer works. Um, th this thing is, is uh, it finds a lot of use in my mixes. So check out the hammer. Getting close to the end. Here we go. So I want to show you the Helios plugin. You've probably heard a little bit about it. It's um, it's uh, an incredible emulation by UAD of a of a plugin that was widely used in the in the, in the early rock period and. It, Boy, is it good! And they've they've nailed this one. This is the newer one, and uh, they've 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 really done a great job on it. Okay, so I put it on my bass. Let's check it out. I made it a little bit loud, so uh, so that you guys can. Uh, can actually hear it. Uh, this is a really odd plug-in. Check out how the bass works. I think you'll you'll understand that this is truly a product of the analog world, but a, a, a great emulation. This um, preamp part and the um, the channel strip is 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 really good. So you, you'll notice I'm taking 20 off here or 10 off here, and I'm adding 10 here and taking off 10 here. That helps me get the sound of the uh, saturation of the plug-in itself. That, that's modeled quite well. And on this plug-in, you can take and turn the EQ off, but still get this combination going with the saturation. Last but not least, here's number six. I told you five, but I thought I'd toss in a bonus. And the bonus is this uh, F6 from Waves. This is the one with the RTA on it. The RTA is actually quite good. And I find I'm using this quite a bit. Uh, here it is on a kick drum. This is without it. Here's with it. And I'm going to switch in. Watch up here and I'll show you. Now, why did I take some of that out? Well, I wanted to have a um, kind of an analog sound for this song. This song is my friend Nabu, produced by Joey Masari. I hope I didn't mispronounce your name, Joey. The plan was to um, to do this um, this mix, kind of kind of as analog as as we possibly could. I, I think I nailed it. So I'm gonna play you a little bit of this. I'm gonna play you a verse and a chorus. I'm real proud of it. Tell me what you think.
So, see you next time. Talk about range. How about Maroon 5 to Carrie Underwood, David Guetta to Keith Urban. It goes on and on and a Lupe fiasco. Like, it, it's just nuts. Uh, please welcome to the desk our good friend and our new friend, Jason Evigan. Hey, hey, bro. Jason. How are you? Uh, hey. What's up, buddy? Oh, that's right. We're, we're both over 6'4". I know. How you doing? You can reach Actually, I'm just under 6'4", but you're 6'6". Six, six, six. Six. Wow. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm just, I have nothing I can contribute. <laughs> I'm looking up to you both. You know, one, one of the things that, as you know, we do our research and stuff beforehand, that I think really holds true for people who operate at the level that you operate. Um, your range is amazing mm. to me. Like you, it, it can be EDM, it can be pop stuff, it can be, but your root is kind of as a rocker. Yeah. Right. And I think what what's interesting in meeting you is that you authentically have maintained being that person. Does that inform your writing? Like, are you? I think it's just in there. Yeah. It's yeah. just true. Energy. Yeah. I got you. Energy. I think everything I like to write. I I kind of always just, the energy has to come got a thing out. Yeah. On it. Even the ballads got a little energy in there. Yeah. We used to back in my manager days. We used to call them mids with a push. Yeah. 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 <laughs> mids with a push. Okay. Right. I like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Hey, Herb. So he's in good company. These are. I made a list. Mm -hmm. um, you should be proud of me. I am. Um, of rockers turned successful songwriters. Okay. Ryan Tedder, Dr. Luke, Skrillex, Justin Tranter, Max Martin, Ricky Reed, Ariel Rex Shade, and Zed. On and on and on. It's, wow. it's not an unusual thing. Raphael and I were talking earlier. It seems like carrying that rock attitude into the next world, but whether it's uh, country or whatever genre, mm. has some advantages. Uh, yeah. Again, I think that what he said is is if if it's energy and it's truth, like I know in my car, I bump a lot of rock and roll because a lot of it is funky. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of it. It's just yeah. energy yeah, yeah, yeah. bumping and you rhythmic. Know, bottle. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, you know, I think also with the band thing, I think I was talking about this with, with Tranter or Justin the other day, mm -hmm. that having a band, it's like having a little small business. Right, and you kind of have this. Uh, and I think most of the people you named were mm -hmm. maybe the leaders or singers mm -hmm. of their exactly. bands. Mm -hmm. And you kind of run this this small business, and mm -hmm. it carries over into like you become a producer, and you're producing the room. And you're kind of this. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, I think that has to do with it too. You know, I was literally true. to your points. Fast, I was in a conversation with I forget who it was. Um, might might have been yesterday. A anyways, the point is that I was we were t I was trying to explain to who I was sitting with how much you're an entrepreneur when you're in. Yeah. when you're in show business. And yeah. particularly the more successful you get, the more you're managing people and things and teams and other kinds of stuff. And you, So you do learn how to be independent and yeah. make sure people all kind of follow a vision. Totally. So you have to have a vision in yeah. order for people to follow, right? Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. you end up creating it. And everybody who sits with us who have achieved a level of excellence all are on top of a pyramid mm. with things underneath them. When did the songwriting for you start? When did you know that you had a gift, or when did you start playing with it? Was it in teens? Was it early? Really early. Really? It was my first song I wrote was fifth grade. Oh, really? Yeah, early. it was. A, it was. A, I had a. Um, and that went number one, right? Yeah, uh, number two actually. Oh, gotcha. Almost. No, uh, no, I looked at yeah. the preschool list. <laughs> <and> it, <that's laughs> right there. it was a talent show, and gotcha. I was playing guitar. And I remember I put together a band where I got my dad to play mm -hmm. keys. Mm -hmm. I got my my next door neighbor to play electronic pad, which we, he actually lifted 
drum. They weren't real. Wow. We had the drums programmed already. <laughs> and, and, my, yeah, we, and, my, and my dad and I wrote the song together in fifth Very grade. Very cool. So, Take the Long Way Home. Very and, uh, cool. So that in was like fifth my, grade? In fifth, fifth grade. Wow. So we wrote it and we performed. I got, you know, got on my knees and did a guitar solo. And I was like, and I, that was kind of the moment. Ooh, and then I, had, then I started a band in sixth grade. And I was, I've always just been doing it. Yeah, yeah your absolutely. Family's very, your mom's like an amazing dancer, right? Your whole yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. Are you the youngest, oldest? Or? I'm the middle. In the middle. I have so a younger you sister. Had a lot of creativity. An older brother. Right? Older sister. I'm, I'm the only dude. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. Same as me. My yeah. Family too. Uh, yeah. And, crazy. My dad. My dad's an actor and musician. And my mom's a dancer, and and she's really creative too. Mm, yeah. Very cool. It, it it runs deep. Shout out to Pops, Greg Evigan. What's up, Pops? DJ and the Bear. Yeah. I and grew up on it. and Chromeo. He, he has I think a, a single coming out with Chromeo. We did. Does he really? Yeah. I, I took one of his songs that he wrote from the eighties. It's like cool it's had this this incredible chorus he wrote that I grew up listening to all the time, and I would always like I got it. So I've reached. I did a metal version of it one time, mm-hmm. and finally when I was working with these guys, like it just I heard it in a new like kind of in a new Chromeo way. And, mm-hmm. So it's called one. <laughs> so track once mine. the Chromeo record comes out, Greg, you gotta Greg. come on the show. Yeah. yeah. Love to have. <laughs> <laughs> the father son thing. Absolutely. He's the best. He's so, the best. It, from your perspective, when people want a Jason Evigan song, is there a signature they're looking for? Is the energy the signature? Is it that you're a hooky kind of writer? I mean, because you've, you've had really notice, you know, notable success. I mean, what lovers do, I just played till it was uh, just thanks. not. You know, <laughs> I, I, it, it's amazing. Yeah, um, just uh, wore the cassette right out, you know? Uh, yeah, exactly. It's how old I <laughs> So, um, what do you think it is? What, what, what is it about your... Um, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure. I know, like, one time I was in the session with Juicy J and Mustard and me, and it was for Rihanna, and I was like, and they wanted something really ratchet. I was like, why am I here? And he's, right, like, he's right. like, I want your melodies. You're I, so I want good. your lyrics. I want your, you know. So maybe me- maybe melodies. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm, not really, I'm not really sure. Mm-hmm. Why? No, I, I, it, it feels, yeah, a melody makes makes sense to me because the music that I know of yours is eminently singable, oh, cool. but it doesn't feel like you've sort of sold out to the pop gods. Yeah. Like it fits and it and it still moves with the yeah. energy and you can kind of pocket with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, it, but it's really hooky. Thanks. So Do you top line as well? Yeah, I'm a melody, I'm a melody, melody guy. Hello. Okay. And I, I mean, I write lyrics too, you know, but uh, I think more and more lately I'm, I'm heavy on melody mm-hmm. and production, and then um, concepts and like kind of overseeing lyrics, you know. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, what was the guitar you used on What Lovers Do? Uh, that was Gion's Fender Strat, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's got this Strat he brought over. That's great. I've been using it all the time. Yeah, just like That's a, a great guitar. It's sound. a newer one, pretty pretty new. Yeah. Oh, did you amp it or? Um, do you yeah, uh, use the silver tone, uh, the silver tone, and and just. It was the bass and the guitar, kind of the, the way they work together. Yeah, the same the bass. What bass did you use? Uh, P bass. What did you yeah. run that through? Just the red red DI box. Oh, okay. Yeah, the red DI, right? That's what? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, A Designs. Yeah, that big gold, like, yeah. nothing. I think that's what it is. Yeah. You write on guitar? Is that your... Is uh, that... Guitar, yeah. Little keys. Little so I'm not keys. like I'm not crazy with keys. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but guitar yeah, for sure. I write guitar, yeah. Gotcha. You're a drummer. Have you ever written a song on drums? I did actually. Me no and joke. you know Amar Mal- yeah. Malik. Yeah, we we wrote a song one time, and I was playing drums. That was really fun. That was Ooh. like the only time I ever in like a songwriting session written on the drums while writing melodies, which was cool. Well, you got you got a great. I should try you know, to do that. This is you coming should, from. Uh, you should let us record it. So yeah. we can use it on the show. Okay, <laughs> we'll shoot it. That'd be cool. This is coming from a South Florida Miami guy. Uh, you got a great feel for percussion. You really do. I mean, that, that seems to be a signature in a lot of your songs too. The use of percussion. But you're from LA. I guess LA people have a little percussion. I, I you know it's an I, insult. I, yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't mean, I didn't did mean it. LA people have production. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I, mean, I want you to qualify would, that. Well, <laughs> I mean, would, would, look at South Where's Beach. a region that doesn't have that? Oklahoma. Well, no, no, no. Oklahoma's got the Daz there band. There goes our Oklahoma yeah, band. Goes. No, Daz band. Oh, I love Oklahoma. Gap band. Yeah. Gap band. North Dakota, Gap band. not so heavy on the percussion. Right. right Actually, right. in like a Native American though. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I think we all got it in us. That's true. Uh, this yeah. is universal. Yeah. I don't know. I, <laughs> <laughs> the show went into the genealogy thing. It's just, it's very yeah, interesting. I reserve, I reserve the right to say, change my mind five times a second. That's the charm of being me. Well, that's yeah. the charm of, I, of editing the show. I don't have to be accurate about anything. <laughs> yeah. But, but actually, because you're not in the studio with mustard and folks like that and ask you to be ratchet unless they know that you can't, that you can go there. And, and frankly, I mean, we interviewed... Maroon 5, well, we actually interviewed Maroon 3 at NAMM. <laughs> uh, 
it was interesting in talking to them of how many urban influences they have. Mm-hmm. You know, Stevie Wonder, yeah. all their stuff. You see stuff with Cardi B, yeah. and you know, they there's always that thing in there. You've got that same. Stevie, I love Stevie's my guy. I oh love Stevie. And I grew up next to his mom, next door. So sometimes, so really? Lula, who's his yeah. mom, and, uh, so every once in a while I'd hear singing. And I'd peek my head over and I'd see Stevie in the backyard You're just, just doing his me. thing. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So I, it was really cool. And I wish, when I was a kid, I wasn't as big of a fan because that's my parents' music. Sure, right, right. But right. I'd be like, oh, cool, Stevie Wonder. And wow. I'd watch him sing just by himself. Oh, my that. God, you must have seen amazing things. Yeah. So, so, not, what are it, your influences? Tell me your major influences. Um, well, let's, we'll start from... Like Beatles, Stevie, Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Um, those are like the um, man. There's so many, and then I, I love like new wave '80s stuff. Mm-hmm. I just love that kind of like flock of seagulls and mm-hmm. yeah. take With Trevor on. Horn. Anything yeah, he did. Trevor, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I got really, really into like West Coast hip hop. I was okay. really into like all that Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg, Easy, mm-hmm. that whole world. I was like mm-hmm. in sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's when my dad got me a guitar. He's like, you're, you're done listening to this stuff. You're getting a guitar. I was like, no, Save I want to play. Child. <laughs> like, I love Ice Cube. And then I got heavy into Pantera and Metallica. Uh, and, but I realized... So his that, method worked. Yeah, but over in like, Raging Against the Machine was my all-time favorite still. Mm-hmm. And I think I've realized that anything I like has to be groove-oriented. Yeah. Like, I remember, like, I never got into the metal. It was like... Yeah. Much, like, I, like, I was yeah. like, the, like, I like pockets. You, yeah. yeah. Boy, when, when, when you, like... Sit down to write. Do you ever like play a bunch of music for inspiration? If you do, what are your references? Yeah. Oh man. You know what? Uh, it depends. You know, I've been doing a lot lately, which is fun. I think hype machine is not even that relevant anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be actually. I don't even know. Could be wrong. But uh, I kind of go to hype machine to see what the t- and like kind of listen. And be like, oh, it's just get some new sounds. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a harder time with Spotify for some reason. I go there and it's it doesn't inspire me as much. But so, I'm really into yeah. like right now. I love like underground electronic stuff. So mm-hmm. I think. Those things really inspire me, and like even the uh, for BB Rex of Ferrari song. I went mm-hmm. to Hype Machine. I heard the song with a guitar in 808s, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna do something like that." So, mm-hmm. so. what do you use for 808s? Um, man, all over. I I definitely love um, what's the new, the red and black one I use all the time. The New Era, new era. yeah, I use that one a lot. Um, but I also just samples, just you know, and tune, and tune it with pitch and time and polyphonic and just. Yeah. Is, you strike me, tell me if I'm, I could be wrong, but it's, you strike me as somebody that stays really balanced between what feels and sounds natural to you and instinctive and not letting technology overwhelm you. Yeah. You you let you use technology to get out what you need, but you don't depend on it, rely on it, and have to have every latest thing. Is that fair? Yeah. I, I mean, I might, I kind of always get the new thing, even if mm-hmm. you don't know how to use it, mm-hmm. which is kind of my problem. So too. you like, have, oh, I heard someone use it, I'm like, I gotta get it. Right, 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 but right. I don't, that's like the one, I actually, like, I keep telling myself I'm gonna take like two months and just learn everything. Mm-hmm. I never but do. But you it. never will. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm a total field guy, mm-hmm. you know, just, and I'll like figure things out as I go. But like, I would love to just master a program, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I haven't fully done that. Well, it's because you're doing well, so you can afford everything. But see what's happening. You can hire people yeah. to master it yeah. for you. Figure this thing out for me. <laughs> but a group guy would be a field guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, the um, you have your own place that you work out of all the time? Yeah, that's actually my studio, the Mac. Oh, there you go. We built that a couple years ago. There you go. And I've seen pictures of it. And it's beautiful. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, really I remember beautiful. Quincy Jones once said, you know, your studio's like church. Yeah. And you go to it, and it's sacred, and God really, comes it in. Is. And, and, yeah. And, 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 it, that's true, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because inspiration comes from it and so on and so forth. Totally. And, you, and you can't, you got to keep it sacrosanct. Like, you can't let people defile it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I, I never I never really got that until I built my own studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't it think became, you know it became, became this kind of like, this really place. And I have, luckily, Gian helps me take really good care of it because I'm, yeah. I'm not the cleanest guy. But, you know, I'm, I wash, of course. Mm-hmm. But, you, know. Oh, that, you know what? That's an update <laughs> on but, Wikipedia. Uh, but, but Gian, so like, I, get this you but, I mean, like, literally, uh, I'll be, like, singing in the mic, and I'll put it back for one second, and then I, before Gian's, like, and, like, wraps up the cable and puts it back. I'm like, well, am I even finished? Love He's, those. like, so... Yeah, we, we, we have some of those on our, on our team as well. So it keeps it nice and, like, zen. Are you a big-time collaborator? Are there people you work with? Oh, like, yeah, I with? Like, a lot. Like, who... What do different collaborators get out of you? Are you doing the same thing each time? Um, like work, if you work with Justin, does yeah. something happen? And as yeah, opposed to everyone has a different like yeah. Stara, I've, mm-hmm. I've been doing a lot of really cool stuff with her. Um, so what was the question again? Is like, well, just what do different 
collaborators get out of you or inspire you? Is it based on whatever you're writing at the time? Or if you know you're going to work with Stara, do you know where you're going to fit and where she's Yeah, like fit? for Stara, I always like to like go totally different than where I think she would go. You know? mm. So I'll, like, for instance, get girls like you, think, ding, 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 mm-hmm. a little riff like that, or like something really funky like what lovers do. Mm-hmm. Um, just to kind of get her, you know, that urban thing she does that's like so poppy, but like so left that I can never write like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when those two combine, it's like mm-hmm. a really special thing. And then like something like Tranter, like he he just brings out such like joy in the room, and like he just and he makes me feel so confident, which mm-hmm. is really important. Like like he's really good. Like I'll notice like they'll be talking and I'll be kind of like trying to figure out something and like wait and be like, does anybody like this? You know, right, right. And he's always the first one to be like, I love what you're doing. It sounds amazing. And then I'm like, someone likes what I do. I can go kill. Yeah, like and you go to town. You know, so it's like he was kind of like that on the show. Yeah, he really knows how to light around him. Yeah, he's really affirming. Special, I like him. Do you start any particular any particular way, like with lyrics or with a a music track, and then write lyrics over it? How do most start? How do most songs start? It's always different. Like, like say the two the two Maroon Five ones. How did those start? Okay, so what lovers do started. I, yeah, I actually had the, the, the bass line first before oh, Star came yeah. in. I was like, want to try something really funky today? And mm-hmm. and then that one started that way. And then Girls Like You was me, Circuit, and Star had just finished another song. She was still in the booth finishing um, the other song. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't even know where it came from. Like, just like a whoop, little mm-hmm. download. Just the guitar riff. I was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool. And I ran into the room and figured it out and came back in. And I played it for her. And she, you know, she's like, I love it. So I kind of started that way. Circuit's a beast, too. Love Circuit. What does he contribute mostly when you were? I mean, he's he's everything. He's just like he's just incredible. It's like he he's uh and his his drum sounds are incredible. He's fast. He's like his sonics are amazing. His overall big picture is amazing. Um, you know, like definitely. I don't know. He's kind of all around, full circle. Can mm-hmm. just whatever whatever needs to be done. You mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. What was it like for you when? When you transition from being a 99% musician to 99% songwriter, for me, when I transition from 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 touring on the road to engineering, it was it was a happy moment. But I got depressed for a little bit, mm. knowing I wouldn't stand in front of people and have them cheer. You know, I miss yeah. that. Yeah. How how was it for you? Was it smooth? It was pretty smooth because it went. It was like a pretty quick. Like oh, I, w- I went from not really having any money to having like, like I got married with $200 in my bank account. Wow. I was touring. Just double what I had. Really? I came out here <laughs> or something. Yeah. Wow. No, 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 driving across the country. I was like, I'm out of gas in oh, New Mexico. Oh my gosh. Damn, where am I going to go? But anyway, that's a whole other story. It was kind of, I just like trusted. It was like, it was like, cool. Like I'm going to get married and like dedicate my life to this girl. And, uh, and, and then it was like in that process of getting ready for the wedding, I took time off to, from touring. I was been touring for years, just like mm-hmm. years and years and years, and make, making no money, and you know, make a little bit, and it's mm-hmm. like, and then, um, yeah, and it was like the, I wrote that song "Heart Attack," the Demi Lovato song, mm-hmm. which just, just that was kind the of first album, wasn't it? I don't know, I don't know her, I don't know her, but it blew up. But then, yeah, that album. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was just big. And right. I, and I didn't know who she was. Like Demi Lovato wants to come. I'm like, cool. Okay, whatever. Who's that? Like, right. I was like Disney. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, um, anyway, so that was like it. Just kind of from that, the door opened. It was like mm-hmm. boom, 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 boom. And it was cool. I was just—it was a—it's actually really refreshing for me to be able to just constantly be creating new things. Like this song was a total dubstep song. Actually, I was really—I'm I'm making dubstep, and people are like, we're writing, we're writing pop music on top of it. So it was like, well, I didn't dubstep for Disney. Yeah, dubstep. Yeah, <laughs> but then there was a point where I realized, and I, I think I realized it later that I actually did get a little depressed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was just that repetition of doing the same thing over and over and over every day mm-hmm. going in mm-hmm. leaving not seeing victoria going the same it was like this mm-hmm. pattern like oh dude three years has passed mm-hmm. why do i not feel as happy as i felt before and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff but can i just tell you how invaluable i think that kind of information is for the audience one of the things we try to do with the show a lot is relate the fact that you being a human has a lot to do with your creativity. Yes. Like, you can't just be creative. You can't just be technical. You're going to go through things and yeah. ups and downs and marriage and death and oh. periods. And there's all kinds of stuff that goes on in life that affects the process. And, and I think you have to talk about it and share it yeah. so people know, 
oh, Jason's going through that. I went through that. Jason told me that I'm going to yeah. get through it. It's Absolutely, really, yeah. It's important. Like, like for instance, your wife, you guys have a group together. We do now, yeah. She, she's an artist, right? It's Elephant, what's the name of it? Elephant Heart. Gotcha. And the background singers are called the Pachyderms? Yes. That's what you said? Gotcha. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Your, your wife, one, is gorgeous and certainly talented, and we're out here having fun with it. But that said, obviously, if you committed to marriage, so working with your wife, being on the road, creating with your wife, yeah, that's cool. a different kind of balance, Whole right? different thing, yeah. 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 This happened on our, so we've been married for seven years. On our five-year anniversary, we went into the new studio. I was like, hey, let's try to make some music, see what happens. We've never really made music written. Mm. Like, she's a hairstylist, makeup mm -hmm. artist, and we did this thing, and it was like magic. No joke. And wow. It just became this thing. So it's now it's been... Oh, you know, wow. That's we finished fantastic. finished the whole album, we're putting it out, and... Yeah. So it's been great. It's been, for me, it's been really nice of just like the, mu the music's so left of center. And it just, I get to just kind of do whatever I want with it. And her, having her brain, which is not, she's, you know, she doesn't know the, the tricks and mm -hmm. the, this or that. And she's just like, what's a, the what's a verse? What's a, who cares? Like, mm -hmm. why not do it again? I'm like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, there's something freeing about yeah, that, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and then recently I've been like getting focused on my health again, getting mm -hmm. to the gym, because it's like, even here, I was like, I, I just learned about the glutes. Mm -hmm. And the glutes, they fall asleep after 10 minutes. Yes. So you got to really work them out. I'm sitting here just doing like little glute workouts. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. keep Me too. Are you? Yeah, no. we all are. <laughs> Sidetrack. I want to well, be included. I the back, included. man. You got to pick the back. You know? Well, can I, can I speak truth to power? Yes. What Dave is really doing is Kegel exercise. <laughs> <laughs> So, but he doesn't hey. know what Kegel is. So. I can know to who's laughing. <laughs> Victoria knows. So kind of, that's kind of so. Yeah. So. Okay, let's go the opposite way. Okay. Um, how, I, I, you're known to be a spiritual person. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching you do Kegel exercise. <laughs> and um, how does that, how does that influence and affect your your creativity? And then how do you use it to to affect your creativity? Spiritual, including your meditation and, and your be spiritual beliefs. Yeah. How does that work into uh, I think the best the process? The best time is when it's all just like that and it's not like spirituality over here and this over here. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like, you know, music, we're creating something that's completely invisible mm -hmm. from nothing. When mm -hmm. It's like our friendship is actually invisible and our love is invisible. All the invisible things are what mm -hmm. really matter in life more than anything. So mm -hmm. I feel like if you're just tapped in from wake up and you know, something I try to do more and more, like wake up and just tap in and like get centered and mm -hmm. tap in there. And then it's like, you know, co-creating, like bringing God into the studio with you. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like leaving space for that. So it's not like, okay, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? It's like, mm -hmm. all right, let's just see what happens. And boom, like this idea is so, to start so, coming. So you, know? you could say that a benefit is it gives you a calmness and a, and a, and a quiet, um, Certainty that you can do something creative is that yeah, a calmness and a certainty exactly because all the best songs I think I've had and successful songs I've had haven't come from me trying that hard. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. You know, I try hard all the time yeah. to mm -hmm. be the best I can be, but yeah. when I'm really thinking about it, all those like, like the melody, like where did that melody even come from? Mm -hmm. I was walking, mm -hmm. it's like Einstein walking down the, the beach, like that's when he thought of the you know, mm -hmm. uh, theory of relativity. It was like it just came, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like. It's amazing. Leaving I, that space. I've been trying that. to meditate, but I just can't keep the thoughts from coming into my mind. How can you stop that? I just heard a really good meditate. I did a little guided meditation the other day, and he goes, all right, let me show you how not to meditate. And he uh -huh. does like a whole thing like, get that thought out of your mind. Don't let anything come into your mind. Uh -huh. Like, I think that's kind of, like, that's one way of doing it. But it's like, no, let the things come into your mind. Let them come by and let them pass through, like, clouds and just come and go. The more you do it, does it get easier? Yeah, definitely. I, th I think, um, definitely, yeah. you meditate? I don't meditate. I was raised in a really spiritual home. Church was a big part of it. And um, it, I've been dealing with somebody who has like terrible anxiety issues, right? Mm. And where it applies to creativity is I, I would try to explain to this person that because you won't give in to the spirituality side of it is you don't have a belief system. Mm. Spirituality is a lot about trust. Like, I'm going to let myself go into this, and I'm going to trust that whatever the process I'm going through, I'm collaborating with a higher power, and we're going to get through this. Yeah. That's and, hard. That's hard. And That's so hard. It is, but when it works, because it works 
mostly for people who try. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when it doesn't work, it's still working. Yeah. Like sometimes the lesson isn't obvious till later. Um, yeah. th this show is a belief system thing. Yeah. There's the could not be more unlikely, one person audio, one person not, came up with it when we were older, this, that, and the other. Just a belief system. Just, okay, well, let's take the next step. Well, let's take the next step. Well, let's trust. Let's take the next step. Let's yeah. take the next step. It sounds like what you're doing. And um, it's a part that I think the audience needs to know that if the best do it, maybe you should think about it. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's not going to hurt you to explore that and find that part of you. Yeah. And I think, and I'm curious to see if you agree, it allows you to sort of plumb some depths of your creativity that maybe you wouldn't have without it. Mm -hmm. It allows you to go in deeper or yeah. maybe go farther. Is that true? Definitely. I think, you know, the more, we were talking about this last night, actually, like being even more aware of your darkness and being mm -hmm. aware of what is in there and going inside there. What do you mean darkness? You don't have any darkness inside you? I'm sure I do, but I need Some, to, I want clarification. <laughs> I mean, I was it's, waiting for him to go his manager. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it like, you mean like a, the bad side of your personality? Yeah, or? yeah. You know, all the things yeah. that are in there that we all... I got Antarctic-level darkness, like yeah. six months out of the year, there's no sun down <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> You're the, you're the Aurora Borealis. Yeah, you're the Aurora Borealis. Borealis. Got you. But yeah, we, we do a great job of, you know, kind of like putting it all together and we're good and everything's good. Mm -hmm. But I think it, being aware of that is like the more you know about it, like the actual, the more enlightened you could get. Because like, like I think it was Carl Jung who said it. He said like, mm -hmm. the, only, the only way to true enlightenment is to know your, mm -hmm. your, dark, your true darkness. I feel like that's been something more, I just kind of realizing again. it. Say that again. The only way to become truly enlightened is to know, to truly know your darkness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just be, just being aware of it and being like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, that is in there, and I and I'm gonna. So it's interesting. So when you write, because I think the, at least the country, even though we go to lots of different countries, the U.S. as well as other countries, are in a particular sort of heightened state of anxiety. Doesn't matter what your politics are. Yeah, it's tense times right now. Um, do topical things like that affect your writing? Do you do do you write about? you know, the times and stuff and perspective and so forth. So, because oftentimes artists lead us through mm -hmm. that space, you know, either great songs or a great movie mm -hmm. or, or yeah. something. Does it affect your writing? Yeah, I was, it's interesting. I think that, uh, I think most songwriters actually have a lot of anxiety. So I, I've been finding a lot of people I work with do. And I, I, don't, I don't think I suffer from it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have moments of anxiety for sure, but, I, but uh, a lot of people I, I do write with, so they, they bring it in, we talk about it. and. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually been a bigger topic, writing about that lately, anxiety mm. and dealing with it and being vulnerable mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. I think emo is coming There's back. so yeah. much of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It um, is. So, yeah, you know, it's it's hard to, like, write about, like, you know, politics, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I feel like it, there's this really fine balance of, like, you don't want to preach. Yeah. Uh, Tranter actually came in the other day and was like, man, is it, like, he's like, is it okay to write a song about being good? He's like, I just want to, he's like, I feel bad that I actually feel good today because all this bad stuff's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. He's like, let's write a song about that. Like, mm -hmm. is it okay to just feel, you know, I just want to be good, basically, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So that was, that was the closest we got recently to talking about, like, mm -hmm. problems, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's tricky, you know? It is, and it's, it's been interesting to watch the big part of the art world, or art, artistic world that we're exposed to manage through it. You know, mm -hmm. there's some who, who are kind of ragey about it, and there are others who are like, oh my God, I want to, and then, you know, it, sometimes it comes, I call them bank shots. It's not specifically political, mm -hmm. but if you just flip it on his head and bank it off the bumpers, you can see that yeah. the, the references and the metaphors and the double entendres and stuff totally. are really about, you know, this time. And to your point about the anxiety side, um, you know, because statistically we're more there. Yeah. Um, Elephant Heart goes there a little more. Is that right? We have a couple of things we did, actually, mm -hmm. with Lauren and Sully, who are in the crowd, too. We just... This last song we wrote, it's called I uh, Heard on the Radio, I'm not even sure, but it's like basically like, who you think taught me to dress like this? Like this. It's all mm -hmm. about like, you mm -hmm. know, monkey see, monkey do. Mm -hmm. We take it all in, mm -hmm. we learn these things. So mm -hmm. kind of go there a little more. I, I think it's, you know, we're old enough to have been around during the 60s and when there was just incredible artistry that, that got mm -hmm. people through those times. And it was, yeah. that so was our many news different places. when I was young. It was so many different, Sly yeah. Stone, Isley Brothers, just... Radius, Radius Machine, though, for me. That Absolutely. Was, you know, they did it for a time. Absolutely. Could not be more political, yeah. For, yeah. for sure. And um, it was helpful to be able to hold on to something like that. I mean, I think you guys have, um, 
incredible latitude to help people, whether you're trying to or not, balance when the when it's mm. choppy, when it's choppy seas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so in the pop world, there was a lot of that in, in the 60s. Right? Massive. Like, What's going on? Ma- absolutely. I mean, yeah, like, Absolutely, mercy, mercy me. Yeah. The ecology. Crosby, Stills, and Nash with Ohio. That's a climate change song from back in the. I think we should do it more. I, I, I think we should step absolutely. into it more. Absolutely. You know, and do absolutely. it. Not be afraid of being. You know. I actually think that uh, when so you know whatever my thought, what my my opinion is, um, I think you knock one out of the park and you'd be amazed at the the audience that would. The, the only difference now is that you can hear back from people who don't care <laughs> yeah. and that affects some people. But I think part of being an artist is also being courageous. Totally. You know, step out, mm-hmm. lead it. You only live once. It's a great, great attitude and license we have to affect pop culture. You know, you don't want to look back and go, God, why didn't I do that? And he did it, you know, or, or she did it or whatever. So get right, man. Come on. Let's, let's <laughs> save the All world. Right, let's go. <laughs> you didn't think it was going to be that heavy. I wish I was more political. I want to be, and I try to be. It's, I just I, I just don't have that. Uh, you know me. I'm not a, I, I'm, I'm not a dimmer switch. I'm on or I'm off. Either I want to see you dead or I want to see you alive. I don't have that patience to I'm go not into that room. I'm not being politics either. Mm-hmm. I'm into humans. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. I, I have so much respect for like Colin Kaepernick, people like that that can actually take a stand knowing it could potentially destroy them, you know? Yeah. I have so much admiration for, for him and for it. people like that. It's so just it's so rare these days that people put their mouth where their money is or their money where their mouth yeah. is. And, you know, people are losing lives and other kinds of things based Absolutely. on beliefs and, and other kinds of things. I just saw where, you know, Pharrell sent a cease and desist notice to, to you know, one politician reusing a song and using a song improperly. And wow. then there's other folks who say, I want my song, you know, this version of, you know, uh, whatever song about America you want in this kind of particular rally and so so forth. So artists, whether they like it or not, are sort of put into a box one way or the other if they choose to be. And, and there's some that, you know, you see great contribution. I think you see more and more people. You see artists, you see athletes, you see saying, I have an opinion and I am just a citizen. Not that my opinion has to count more because I have more profile, but here's my platform and I use yours like you use yeah. yours. And, and I, I just think that's a important civic duty. So, playing live. Okay. When you play live, the information that you get back, Mm -hmm. isn't that really something that gets put away in the vault and knowing how to make an audience, seeing how they react, what they react to? That's a big thing uh, to go through. You're asking about the, Mm -hmm. that's a huge thing. I think about it all the time when we're writing a song, like, oh, this part's going to make the crowd go crazy. Mm -hmm. This is a, Mm -hmm. you can, if you've seen it live, you, Mm -hmm. you know that, the energy and like how humans work, you know. Yeah. So I think that's a big, a really big part of it. Yeah, I do too. Sing along parts, easy, you know. And even like uh, David Guetta told me one time, like we were writing a song for him, and he was like, "It's like I love this song, but like I, I like it's I don't understand these lyrics. Like you can't sing these. My like, people in my country won't understand these lyrics." And I was like, "Oh," and, and he was like, "Simple words." He started showing me songs like just simple things. And I, I was like, it, that, "That really stuck with me forever." Just like the, make the chorus just something everyone in every country can sing, even if the, if, if English isn't their first language. And mm-hmm. we travel all every year, like six weeks, and you go to the Philippines and you see these songs that every kid's singing, you know, like, and they're like the mm-hmm. Nanas, the Oh's, and I love you, the simple mm-hmm. things, and then the verses save for all the little. Stuff. It's, you know, it, it's harder to be, it takes real genius to be simple. It's almost easier to be more complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Right? It, it, like it, to get to that simple spot is to take simple words and convey complex thoughts is almost impossible, except for the greats, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and speaking of the Philippines, one of the ways that you are doing your part is you create a foundation that's tied to the Philippines. Tell us about that. Yeah, my, my wife and I, Victoria. Mm-hmm. Um, Victoria, can you come up here and just stand and so we can just yeah, see who you are? Yeah, yeah. we just, just come up here because we're all so ugly. <laughs> Thank God for beauty. This is Victoria. Hi. This is the wife. Yeah. So how cool it is, you know, you've got this foundation. And I'm, I'm sure that we're not helping out from an audio standpoint. But explain the foundation you guys put together. Yeah, so we... we we were on a, a, a mission to actually go do some stuff in Thailand to mm-hmm. help in Thailand. And Philippines was going to be our vacation, just hang time. And turns out the typhoon happened. And we're like, we can't just cancel our trip because the typhoon. Let's go there and help. So we went there and we, we were, uh, someone hooked us up with this little village and we met, went there and 
this and stuff. And we fell in love instantly with this whole village. Mm -hmm. And then um, when we're leaving, we're like, we promise you we'll see you again. And we're like, we look at that star, just know that like, we're thinking about, we see the same star. And we're like, we'll be back here. And we're like, we just made we a big promise. Right. But we knew we a commitment. He said, he, he's, he's like, that was a big Big promise. <laughs> big promise, but I really felt like we were going to see these kids again. And then when we came home, it was like, okay, how do I not just single out this one little girl? Because one little girl reminded me so much of my niece. And I'm like, how? Oh, she's just born there. And my niece, we're born here. And like, yeah. wow. Like, how do I mentor her? And so I've, I had a, I've actually had a pen pal since I was 12. Wow. So it was really influence, influential to me. And I was like, what if I paired everyone with a pen pal and they could be encouraging and, and, and open Americans' eyes that don't get to travel and don't know and, mm -hmm. and do it in this way that allows them to really be true friends, not just like you can write in this little box. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. They, yeah. They, they, they send gifts. They send, I mean, like, you can so, stuff it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's really cute to see like a kid in the Philippines who gives his like favorite toy. He's like, I love this. This is my favorite toy. I want you to have it. You know, And it's really sweet to see the hearts of these little kids and mm -hmm. they're growing up together too. So it's... All right, well, thank you for letting me embarrass you. How is it? Do you, do you do his hair? Actually, it's really funny. I always have, and today he just went. To he the went gym, natural. And I was like, I didn't we were in an ice cool. tub earlier. <laughs> we're just rogue. Well, well, congratulations. We can't <laughs> wait to hear the music. There's an art component to this process, too, right? They send photo. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so the idea was that because they didn't, speak, you know, the language barrier is that they would uh, draw pictures. So th there'd be themes. There's themes every month. So you draw pictures of what's going on, and they, they send pictures. So it's like how speaking cool through art, and how then cool there's a little English. To it. And this has been going on how many years? Three or four years now. Four years. Four, four years now. Yeah. Amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. And what's the website called? Canyoupicturethis.org. Okay. Yeah. It's really right. cool. Good picture. Stuff. Sorry, I'm I'm saying the hook to a song. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> the uh, in in Team Jason, which is important. There's business folks, obviously your wife and you guys, and so so forth. And then there's a there's a creative team that has to support what you're doing. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who? What do you do? You have engineers, the studios, and so forth. Yeah. Because when I got here, I noticed, and I'm sure it's because of your success level. Um, I know she have a security guard. <laughs> um, I think his name was Gian. Gian Stone. G I John G I A N. Yeah, we call him Stone. So, for people who don't know, behind the cameras, there's you know maybe 20 folks sitting there, and usually when we come in, you know they're happy to see us, and we yeah. shake hands, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I go up to the one guy who doesn't give a shit that I'm sitting there. I was like, hey, and he's like this. <laughs> that I mean, was Gian. I mean, I was like, wow. okay, this dude is a badass. But I hear he's super talented. Super talented. And I also heard he's a fan of the show. So Gian, yeah. come up here, man. Yeah, I'm not Gian. <laughs> We're on the same team, <laughs> buddy. Yeah. Right. Come, come right here. Yeah. What up, G? I'm, I'm gonna help okay, out with the audio right now. Kneel right. down. Kneel okay. down. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, you got to be from New York. Yes, from New York. Yeah, yeah. because that's all the attitude that I got when time. I first met yeah, you. Yeah, it's a tough time because the Red Sox, but we'll figure that out. Well, yeah. I'm a Dodger guy, so it's been tough oh, all the way tough. around. Yeah, yeah, it was really tough because I'm making <laughs> our ass. So what's it like for a guy like yourself? What's it like for a guy like yourself to get the opportunity to work with him and grow from that? Uh, it is literally like he's helped me achieve my dreams. I'm not just saying that because I'm on camera, but I've learned so much. Um, I think that. It, it's cool. Like, coming from New York, um, you, you know, I was surrounded by, like, this comfort zone um, and all my friends, and, and we made this certain kind of music, and, and I loved it. But being around Jason, it's like he taught me how to express myself in all different genres of music, like, mm -hmm. and that music really is just an expression of, like, who we are. So mm -hmm. it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been great. Do you do and the... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Do you do the primary uh, amount, the bulk of the recording vocals and... And, yeah, um, we we every vocal we kind of sit together on, and and um, you know I'm at I'm usually at the computer, and um, and he's you know directing the the artist for the most part, and we're coming up with harmony ideas, and, and except kind of for so on uh, when SZA did her part on Well I Was Do, we're all in there, me, Jay Cash, and Gian, and Gian mm -hmm. sit there, and, and I'm like I'm like all right, SZA, let's let's do it. She goes, can you leave? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah, Jay Cash too, and I was like. Okay. I'm like, I was like, no. so, like, so, so, so John's like, yeah. just John's left in there. And I come back in and like, he was sweat, he was sweating in the room. He's like, everything good? He's it's like, like I think I got it. <laughs> wow. And so he, so he did his all on his own. And he also did the bridge on what, on uh, Girls Like You, ended up writing the melody with Adam. Yeah. So he's actually a writer on Talk it. Talk about like, life changing. Yeah. I mean, that was literally my, my wow. dream in life was to work with them. So, so you're not on our so team anymore. 
I was a few months ago. I'm coming back. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm, I've got some information wrong on you. I got the security guard part, but I thought that your dream was to be on Pensado's place. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. And, it is. I, and I, I, you've achieved that. I do watch it all the time, and it's taught me a lot about music. So that's, I love a, you guys that's, that's, a, that's a honored. shameless that's a shameless no. need for a plug. No, no, no. So welcome. Thank congrats. you so much. And, uh, and I won't fuck with Jason, I promise. Okay, yeah, okay, cool, watch cool. out for this. All right, you got it. And, and last but not least, shout out to Rafael Fadil, the newest me member of the team. Yeah, which How's Rafael. How's Rafael doing? It's been incredible. He's an incredible mixer. He really is. He really, really is. Gifted on a number of levels. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, um, Gian hit me up. This is actually kind of a good little thing for me. Like, so Gian hit me up on Facebook for mm -hmm. three years. Mm -hmm. Just persistent, but really kind mm -hmm. and not rude, like not rude and not... Like annoying, he was mm -hmm. just like always like, hey, just checking in. You see yeah. that song? We we talk once in a while, and mm -hmm. it finally just got to a point where I actually needed someone really bad. And I just he was the one guy that kept it. He was like a nice guy. He's this, you know, hundreds, hundreds of people mm -hmm. hit him up, and mm -hmm. but he was persistent. And then Raphael too was like, you know, he was persistent in a, a couple of times. And mm -hmm. Raphael was a big fan, that's or a, is a big fan. That's a, yeah, I'm a big fan of his now. So all right, so Gian just talked about baseball. Okay. Cool. Batter's Box is an institutional part of this show, and oh um, boy. since the Dodgers did so poorly, you got to, you know. Wait, are they done? Are they out? Yeah, and they got their ass kicked. So. They had that one moment that was pretty cool, though. Right? Yeah, th yeah, they had a couple moments that were cool, but they had more moments that were bad, so you got to now represent right. us. Right. Um, and you're the uh, representative for the yeah. Ebor um, City um, Tostadas? Well, I got inside info from Roth, so I know I'm going to kick his ass this time. Uh, okay, Ooh. all right, fire it away. Here's Batter's Box. Norman's Guitars. Pete's Coffee. Ooh. <laughs> right there. Key. Yeah. Uh, B flat. That's still wrong, huh? Uh, Mike. Dean. <laughs> Perfect answer. Perfect answer. <laughs> My Perfect boy. answer. <laughs> Mike Dean. Love him. Uh, preamps. Neve. Distressor. Oh, rock. <laughs> Virtual Sense. Serum. Analog sense. Prophet six. Percussion. Oh, I, I had literally hundreds of pictures pop in my mind just now. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. Of people. I just, and then I saw, like, uh, like Aaron. Oh, do that movie again. I heard my, my song, Fun. Listen up. But percussion? That's just a like a. Gloria Stefan. Okay, my, my, my shaker's from Thailand. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, 808s. A new era. Tempo. 115. What's the cheapest piece of gear you used on a song that, that made it out to the public? Um, a candle. I got just bang out of a candle. Very cool. What you can't see is off camera, your wife is so supporting that candle move. Oh, yeah, yeah, because actually she banged the candle. She oh, brought the candle cool. in. She brought yeah. the candle in. Yeah. Did she get crit? No. We don't give her credit. Victoria, there's a union for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Before Dave takes us home, Gloria well, Allred runs it. By the way, before you take us home, one last request: the um, we, as you heard us in the beginning of the show, we periodically go around and speak to students, and they'll come mm -hmm. in mass and so on and so forth. Uh, if that was ever fun for you to do, because sometimes I love it, do, I'm in. Okay, cool, 100. percent There's a couple, couple, couple things I'll share with you after the show, but cool. it'd be great for people to be able to get to you. And, and I mean, what is also rare um, is that you find people. Um, that are so talented and so cool. Wow. So it, it's very cool that, that you're so cool and the family's so cool. Um, and, you know, the fact you need a security guard um, is, you know, that's just part of success. So, <laughs> John, I in North Hollywood, man. easy, bro. I'm on the, I'm on yeah. the good team. Uh, DP, take us home. Okay. Um, I say this all the time. Um, just because you're a great typist doesn't mean you're going to write a great novel. And sorry to run that by you again, but in this case, I'm trying to tell you and show you, based on what I know about uh, Jason, um, it, it's, it's just as important to have, have a belief system that can translate into your creative system. And for him, he has a very complex one that involves some of his spiritual beliefs, some of his uh, other beliefs. And, and if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So try and try and have life experiences that give you something to write about. And, and without that, um, you're just spitting in the wind. So uh, on a positive note, we've recently had on some great songwriters, and that's, that's something I've noticed they all do. They all have something to say. 
and um, that something is different in each case. And the way you get something to say is by life experiences. So get out there, have some fun. It's uh, it's hard to sing the blues when you got ten million in the bank. So so if some bad things come your way, use it. Whatever comes your way, use it. And, and if you got ten million in the bank, just chill. <laughs> 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 we'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>